Thank you. It's so great to be here. Um, my name is Jacob. I work at King in uh, Stockholm. Um, do you, uh, any of you play our games? What games do you play? FIFA. FIFA. Yeah, that's good. The mother, mother ships game. That's good. Do you play any of the King games? Yeah, we see small. What do you play? Okay, shy. Yeah. Um, anyway, one of our games is um, is Candy Crush. Um, let's see here. Sorry. Uh, okay. So one of uh, our biggest games is Candy Crush that you might have heard of. Uh, so and if you if you put together all the playing time that all the players that have been playing Candy Crush uh, throughout time, uh, you know, accumulate that together. How much do you, time do you think it, uh, that is in total? Go have a guess. If you guess wrong, you will stand up and we will laugh at you. <laughs> Ten million years. That's a really good guess. It's five million years. So it's so it's going back to you know, when the apes and the humans were separating in the DNA. So we have, so the last five million years, we have been collecting data. Uh, and uh, my job is to take that data and transform it into insights so we can make our games uh, better. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So just a quick background on King. Uh, we started in 2003. Uh, we have uh, today a little bit more than 2,000 employees. Uh, we, are out, we are here on these 13 places in the world. Um, and we mainly do um, casual games on the, and, and the release them on mobile and, uh, and Facebook. Uh, and you can see we have uh, four big franchises, Bubble Witch, Farm Hero Saga, we have Pet Rescue and then, and then Candy Crush. Uh, and all these together, uh, we, with all these together, we have about more than 400 million monthly active users um, that are playing our games. But the, the, the most interesting story is, uh, I guess, is Candy Crush. Um, so if you look here, this is the, the revenue, revenue journey that Candy Crush did. So you can see in the beginning, when we released it on mobile, it exploded. And then you can see the rest of the journey from here. What, what many people doesn't know is that we also, during this time, been be able to release a lot of great games in the meantime, but while since Candy Crush launched. Um, and if you put these together, you can see that after the initial you know, Candy Crush explosion, you can see that we've been able to, to keep the revenue up by releasing a lot of good games. Uh, and now the question is uh, how we can make sure that we uh, you know, release good games constantly to be able to, to, uh, to give our players new, uh, new good games that they can continue playing. And you can divide it into, um, into two areas. So first of all, on one, one, one side of the weighting scale, we have, um, we have the art part, which is everything surrounding uh, the crea creat creativity process around you know, creating really good games that uh, are fun for the players to play. Uh, and there on that side, uh, we have Steven. Uh, for example, he's also here from King, so he's going to have a panel later today. Uh, so he's, uh, he's VP of game design. So he's working more towards the art side. But then we also have, on the other side, we have the science part, which is more my area. Um, and then what I think makes, makes King so successful when we've been re releasing games uh, is that we are really good at balancing these two. And then we also have, um, as you m met a little bit before, Iris. She is producer at King, and she's, uh, part of her work is to make sure that we balance these two together. All the science with everything surrounding the scientific approach of you know, testing hypotheses, analyzing the data, and understanding the behavior in the app to make sure that we can make the games even greater. <clears throat> so we, we use um, data for a lot of stuff at King. Uh, and this, you can see, is a you know, simple model uh, for what we do, for what we use data for to take decisions. And you can see roughly there you know, the, the impact, the po potential impact of the decisions that we do within these areas. So first of all, we have the genre and platform decisions, which have a pretty, pretty big impact. You, for example, uh, do you take decision to go into uh, VR as a platform? 
you know, how does that, what is the current trend of that market, which is exactly why we're, you know, big reason why we're here today. So that's a typically a question we answer in that platform platform part. And then we have everything surrounding the business models. There are different business models out there. Should we use an existing one? Should we, should we develop a, a new one that fit the scheme game better? Um, and then we do the execution part, the production of the game. We do the marketing, making sure we get the all the installs. And then we're optimizing the game when it's live. And today I thought we could talk a little bit more about the execution, the production, uh, and also the optimization part. But first of all, how many of you are using data regularly to, to analyze your games? There's a few of you. Um, I know it's hard for me to know how much you know about, about it, so I used to, you can, can go through the, the, the basics that we're using at, using at King. So first of all, the retention. I guess most of you have heard, right? Yeah, so retention is, is all about... Uh, do you have a game that people are coming back to? You know, it's your, uh, in what degree your game, uh, the, peop the players are coming back to your game after they install it. And a typical measurement for this, as might, some of you might know, is, for example, the day one retention, which means that how many percentage of the people that install the game are coming back the next day. And then you also can do it for, you know, six-day retention, you know, how many people are coming back the, the one week after. Um, so that is their tension. That's all about, is the game fun? Are people coming back? And then we have the, the monetization part. Because also, if you want to continue developing games, I guess you have to earn some money as well. Uh, and monetization, I guess it's, it's, there's different models. And when it comes to VR, like we are here today to, uh, to mainly discuss, I guess uh, it, it's a little bit different. In the King's world, it's um, mostly about freemium. And uh, when it comes to monetization in freemium, one of the primary metrics that we are using is uh, the revenue per install, which means for each install that we have, on average, how much, how much, revenue, how much um, money do we earn on each player. Um, and I, could, I thought I could go into an example here. I was part of the, um, the Candy Crush Soda launch when we did it in 2014. Um, so you can see here, here's the timeline. Um, so what we usually do is, when we're releasing a game, we're starting off with a playtest, which in our world means that we are selecting a one or two countries where we are testing the game. Uh, and this is the first time that we actually receive any data. Uh, before that, we have some data, you know, qualitative research and you know, player experience testing in more, more qualitative matter. But this is the first time we release it up, out to the wild, even if it's uh, in a smaller population. Um, so you can see there, soda there, and then the, 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 the two gray bars is, uh, is uh, two of our, our other games. So what we do, uh, because we have the luxury of that, and that is comparing our game, per game performance, our game retention, to compare to our other games to see if it's performing good or not. Uh, there are some other techniques that you can use, you know, like many of you are in a situation where you don't have anything to compare to directly, then you can do some other stuff, but this is how we do it, because we have this. We had these other games that we can compare. And during the playtest, everything is about uh, retention, to making sure that people you know, love the game and come back, and uh, you know, starting playing it and understanding it. So what we're doing there, um, first of all, in, in our, for example, this is Candy Crush Shoda Saga, we have this, if you've been playing uh, many of our Saga games, you, can, you know that we have a, a linear progression kind of thing when you, when, you create, when you beat one level, and then so you count up to one, two, three, four, five, and going on. Uh, we just released 2,000 levels in, in Candy Crush Saga, so there's some, some content for you that didn't raise your hand before. Uh, and then also, so then if we look at the retention, we can see that oh, either it's really good, but usually it's not that good because it's, uh, we haven't developed the game fully yet. So we get an early indication, and in Soda's case, you could see that it was not performing as we wanted. Uh, so what we did there was, uh, which is a one of the, big, be, the most important tools in this phase is that we have the user experience funnel, the first time funnel, uh, which means that for that, uh, our specific game, we define uh, the first few steps uh, of the journey that we want the player to, to go through when they install the game. And then we can, we, you know, we're closely looking at where are they dropping off and why to just like, uh, look at their behavior. And then when we have um, uh, optimized uh, the level flow as well, looking at all the levels and uh, looking at the first-time experience funnel. Uh, we are then uh, 
A couple of months later, we released it again when it was optimized, and now we started looking at the, the monetization, which is the revenue per install. As you can see, it started off to being pretty low there, but then after, after a period, when we're looking at the, at the monetization parts, we are you know, making sure that we have the, the products that the, that the players uh, you know, enjoy in, enough to, uh, to pay for, and then also looking at you know, the difficulty of the levels that is a, you know, and balancing them is a, is a really big, big area for us. So we did some optimizations, and then after a while we realized that you know, what we did had really good effects. Uh, because after, after releasing so many games that we have, we, we, it's, we have been learning where, you know, what areas in the game that we should look at and what usually are the behaviors that, that uh, are the bottlenecks. And then um, we released the game, uh, and after you release the game, uh, in our case, because we have so many levels, a lot of the work for us is to is to op you know, optimize the level because the, the players differ a lot in their behavior and skill. You know, if they, re if, you, if they install it in the early phases or if they install it, you know, two years afterwards. But it's often the most engaged and, uh, and, and higher skill players that install in the beginning. So that is a, in a big optimization that's starting when we release the game. But it's not only uh, the levels that we are tweaking. We have a lot of focus as well on on uh, experimentation and really understanding the, the drivers behind the behavior for, uh, in, uh, with our players. So, in this case, it's an example here of uh, when we are uh, giving the player information which levels are hard, and then when we've been doing that, we realize that uh, with that information, they are less likely to churn because they, they, are, they, they realize when they're playing it and can't really beat it that uh, oh, but it's okay, because it's a really hard level. And then when they also beat it, uh, they you know, get a you know, really you know, sense of uh, accomplishment as well, because this was a really hard level. So we've been seeing that this is, um, uh, is a good way to, to find the core drivers and you know, behaviors and what the players are feeling when, when they're playing. And utilize that to optimize, optimize the game. And to, and to go through then, uh, if, I, if I can have some tips for you then, even if a king is a totally different situation than you are, I understand that, but, uh, but some of the tips I could, could give you is onboarding perfection, which means that really make sure that you define your funnel uh, in the beginning of the game to, make to, to, to know exactly how you want the player to play the game, and then you follow that up with data to see where they fall off. Uh, so you know exactly where, where in the game you have, you have your bottleneck if your retention is not um, uh, where you want it to be, because the retention is, uh, is the absolute focus that it should be in the beginning. And then also to be able to do this experiment to understand, uh, at least, you know, for example, in VR now, when it's so early in the, in the life cycle of, of the product, it's, it's so many things that are uncertain. Uh, then, and then it's going to be so important for you guys to, uh, to learn all of these concepts of uh, you know, what you include, what components you have in the VR experience. So then it's really good to have an A beta system that you really have the capability to test the stuff that you want to test. And then, uh, when you're testing, make sure that you're focusing on testing you know, the core drivers. Why do you think that the players are coming back? Uh, why are they coming back you know, to do the you know, core loop in the game or if you have any other you know, game model in your VR, VR games. So that is a, a summary of uh, some of the tips that I came up with that I think can be applied to you. And I think that's all, uh, all from, from me. Thank you, everyone.